Hello, my squirrels, and today we will be talking about a very special list. A very special one that I um, really, really wanted to get off my brain for a while. But today we are doing the top ten most best animated TV series. Now... A few things do come to mind when you think of animated TV series. Of course, you gotta be fair, so three rules will be set. One, it cannot be adult swimming, which means no Simpsons, no, no, no anything like that. No inappropriate stuff. Two, um, no meme-centric based TV series. And number three, have fun. Well, have fun as we merrily go. So without further ado, here are the top ten TV series, animated TV series of all time. Number ten, My Hero Academia. Academia has um, been a wild ride recently. It has five seasons and and three movies under its belt, and and that's surprisingly good for an animated for an animated show. Technically, it's an anime, but it's one of the better ones of the of the 21st century. And I uh, cannot blame anyone because this is one of the biggest fan-based anim anime things I've ever seen. But I really think that this is overkill considering that fans do not count towards the final product. Of course, I'm talking about the, um, say, show. And if you like action, this is the show for you. If you like people talking a lot, then yeah, this is the show for you. However, I wouldn't recommend it for the faint of heart, but do it at your own risk, I guess. Anime is not for the faint of heart. So, this is why it's number 10 on the list. And uh, number 9 will really show why I'm truly biased in this world. Number 9, the classic Thomas series. This is a sentimental favorite of mine. And a sentimental favorite of probably a bunch of other people in the world. And this is the t TV series that defined me as a child. And never, you're never going to take anything away from that. Like, it's so realistic. It's so good. Like, critics back in the day really loved this TV series for its realism. For its, like, grounded in reality plots. It, it doesn't go too far with any, like shenanigans like any of those like crappy shenanigans of like what like kooky tv series of the 90s and the 2000s it, it it just stayed grounded in reality it was based off the reverend audrey's stories that were also critically acclaimed and uh and uh and uh, i hate people keep saying this but it's just a kids tv sit show it's just a kids show Bruh, like, I know, like, people have, like, fan bases for, like, Sesame Street and the flipping PJ Masks, but Thomas and Friends, when you mention that, it's like, oh, I have limits. There's a Thomas fan base of adults who actually treasure this series because they were kids once. We were all kids at one point, and, and adults like this TV series. There's nothing you can take away from that. Like, it's that fun. It's that treasuring. And, and and as a kid, I really loved it. But it's so sad to see where the TV series is going now. To hell with Mattel. Like, Mattel, treat the series better. Go back to square one. Like, go back to, like, model trains, like, running on a, on a big scale track with cameras tracking their every movement. Like, that was good. Please, Mattel. Please. I rest my case. Number nine. The classic Thomas series. Number eight. TMNT. The Nick version. Well, you could possibly choose any of the variants of TMNT over the years. But the 2012 version really stood out to me as a kid. Like, every day, I would go downstairs to see what was new. Like, 
what new episode was on. Like it has like this, like in the, in the first three seasons, like it has like this monster of the week. Well, in its case, mutant of the week and the turtles fight it. Otherwise, if it's not that kind of episode, it's like, like a stealth recon mission or a heart to heart episode. Like it's those kind of things that, that make this show what it is. Like, season one two three like those are banger seasons season four i think that's where the uh hype started to go down a bit because of the whole space shenanigans but later in season four it did kind of recuperate some of that thing some of those things but 20 but uh in 2017 that's when that's when the series really started to lose steam but it was still good I mean, like, it still continued the story arc in the arc of the previous seasons, like, from episode one to six. But then, like, in episode seven, eight, nine, eleven, twelve, thirteen, like, it didn't continue it. Like, it went for the... It was called Tales, but ten was, like, the prequel episode. Like, it was so heartwarming. I... I, I just love this series. Like... It just takes a, the team and team franchise and make it makes it serious, and that's what the original comic was. It was serious, but but action's great, music is um, great, and uh, the animation overall looks beautiful. Sadly, though, it ended in twenty seventeen. I would really kill to see a sixth season, but the. Uh, other Nick version, the rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, has nothing to do with this continuity. And uh, by the way, that version of the show just sucks. Yeah. Number seven, Godzilla the series. Of course, it wouldn't be a list unless the King of the Monsters showed up somewhere, but instead of the Hanna Barbera cartoon called Godzilla, which fans tend to forget over the years, I decided to go with Godzilla the series. Now, as we all know, the 1998 film was a huge disaster, and the Patrick Titopoulos design was controversial among the G fan base. However, when the series hit not so long after the movie's release, that's when opinions started to change. Well, on the... on that design of the character, like, now this character, now this version of the character could shoot atomic breath. It could now fight. It it can. It now was taller than it was in the in the controversial film, and it also could now withstand nuclear weapons. And there was now a concrete reason as to why the other, as to why the other one wasn't able to withstand nuclear weapons because it was a juvenile. But of course, this one is cool. I mean, like like TMNT, it has a monster of the week, but it even has like its own thing going for it. By the way, the characters from the from the controversial 98 film are now likable. They're and there are even some new ones. And uh yeah, there's also this one robot that gets kicked that just gets killed almost every single episode of that series, which is really funny and pays off for comic relief. And even they, like, introduce this version of their... Like, it's like the TriStar version of Mechagodzilla, but, like, they reuse the deceased uh, version of Godzilla that attacked in 98. And it makes for, like, a, a cool version of Mechagodzilla. But overall... The show was great, but sadly it ended in 2000. I would have loved to see if it could continue. And yeah, it's a very... And it's a very, well, favorable TV series when you're a Godzilla fan. By the way, check out Godzilla Singular Point. I heard it's good. Number six, The Flintstones. The Flintstones is from the animation cartoon behemoth that was Hanna-Barbera. Hanna-Barbera was the animation giant of the 90s and clearly did not want 
then their crown to be overtooken. It's a great story about your the first ever modern family you could ever think of. And to even show their modern sea, they're even on the covers of of famous cereals, Ruby Pebbles and Coco Pebbles, or whatever it's called. The Flintshell, the Flintstones have left a very substantial impact on modern media, getting their own live action film and also being part of the golden age of kids entertainment. And uh, it's not the last time we'll see this animation behemoth on this list. And uh, yeah, I'll give you a hint of to who that is. Give me a squish neck. <laughs> Anyways, the Flintstones even crossed over with their fellow animation partners, the Jetsons, and even starred in an attraction at Universal Studios Flor Florida called The Fantastical World of Anna-Barbera, which is sadly now closed at Universal. And speaking on that sad note, the Flintstones sadly ended in 1966, which only was six years of spotlight on, on the mini screens, which I could have loved to see more of this, of this cave, cavemen family. Number five, Scooby Dooby Doo. This is a personal favorite of mine, and and uh, yeah, another one of Hanna Barbera's classics. It's basically about five, f a group of five, four are are your typical sixties teenagers, and uh, one is a talking, a talking dog named Scooby. Scooby is a is a scaredy cat and like likes to tend and tends to be to get easily spooked. And uh, his friend Shaggy is is the same as well. And uh, yeah, really the series is basically the gang figuring out who figuring out a mystery about a ghost, a monster or anything like that. And of course, it always ends up to be someone in a in a suit, in a in a rubber suit. Basically, the a more appropriate version of a whodunit mi murder mystery or clue. And of course, the iconic line of every episode at the end of every episode is, "And I wouldn't got it, and I wouldn't have gotten away with it if it weren't for you." Wouldn't if it weren't, and they would, and the mystery gang would would fill in the blank. Us meddling kids. And of course, and of course, that would always leave the audience with a good, with a good feeling in, in their, in their minds. Sadly, this series, like many other Hanna-Barbera classics, ended sometime in the 80s. Number four, Camp Cretaceous. Camp Cretaceous is the new Netflix series that premiered about almost two years ago, on September 18th, and it has had quite the impact on the Jurassic community. And with Jurassic World Dominion's, well, let's say, good to meh reviews, this series is finally going to wrap up with season five later this month, or later this year next month. Who knows at this point. But the thing that makes Camp Cretaceous so enjoyable is that it's it gives you the Jurassic series in a nutshell. And it gives you the it gives you a much more friendlier side but still you find it dark and and uh, it gets dark when it needs to get dark, and and it, uh, and uh, and only uh, progressively better over the series. Over the series, great characters, some actual great animation, the realistic dinosaurs, 
And I can only say with 100% certainty that this show is highly recommended for those who love Dinosaur and Jurassic Park, which would be me. But as the top three will show you, there are some others that do TV series is a whole lot better. Number three, DuckTales. DuckTales is a unique case of a TV series getting a second life. DuckTales is basically, well, what you would call uh, an adventure. Regardless if it's the classic 80s version or the 2017 reboot, it's basically the same over, over both versions. Basically, you're going to have a fun time. Basically, uh, well, I keep saying basically, but but you see, DuckTales is very, is very well rare in that it's a modern take on an old, on an old well, well old characters, that being the Duck family. However, it gives them a lot more depth and lore that even gives Mickey Mouse a run for his money. Now, of course, the, now of course, I would have said that this series would would be lasting to the present, but due to the COVID-19 pandemic, it ended abruptly on a on a heartfelt season finale. And and I can rightfully say, is this is this trash or treasure? Well, if Scrooge McDuck were here, it would definitely be a treasure. And I would agree with him. At number two, we have Avatar The Last Airbender. I mean, like, I have to put this here, otherwise I will get chased upon by a thousand, like, angry fans saying, Avatar The Last Airbender's top ten cartoon. But I'm not putting it in a number one for a specific reason. For one, um, um, I mean, like, come, come on. I mean, like, this is my list. My list, my... It's my list, guys. Don't judge. You make your own list. You get the idea. But literally, please, can we stop talking how about how good Avatar is? And 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 please, please, I will talk about the good. But you need to understand, I am literally god tier at number one. It is the most unpredictable. But anyways, what is good about this show? Um, let's see here. Great character development. It makes us care about every other character. Um, uh, oh, yes. Um, uh, is uh, probably the best Nickelodeon show out there and probably the best show that Nickelodeon will ever produce. Yes, that includes SpongeBob. And, um, oh, no, no, no. let's see here. Yes, it, it perfectly captures the... The arc of the hero's journey in a bottle. It's basically, basically, season one, you have an introduction. Season two, you basically, well, build off that. And then season three, big finale. And it doesn't play it off like, well, oh yeah, let's just make it like, oh yeah, big CGI, big CGI fight. By the way, this is 2D animation. I will stand for 2D animation till the end of time. Now that I got your attention, what's the one thing that brings it down for me? Well, it kind of gets caught up in the moment for me. And, and while the action scenes are fun, I really wish they did have some pizzazz in them. But anyway, but, but some of them do have pizzazz, which I will give it credit to. And also the, the voice acting is good and... And if not, it's a, it's just about every time that Ang and Ang and company ruin a, ruin a cabbage cart. That makes me laugh. But anyways, what is number one? Well, you're about to find out in a couple seconds. But number one goes to Animaniacs. Yep, personal bias ultimately came through, and this absolute treasure of a tv series it, it just it it's it speaks words guys it speaks words speaking of words the care the main characters yakko wacko and dot the warner brothers and the warner sister are well <clears throat> 
what can I consider the best comedic trio since the Three Stooges? Basically po poking fun at modern issues of the 90s and now recent times. Basically, they like to break the fourth wall a lot and and do so in a kid-friendly but also adult, well, viewing matter. But, honestly, Animaniacs is a, is a sentimental favorite of mine because it's what sparked my love for cartoons. And guess what? It was the first cartoon animated series that I watched as a baby. Yeah, a baby. So, color me shocked to find that it gets rebooted and most of the charm is still there. Not to mention, it created a somewhat successful spinoff named Pinky and the Brain. But, that is all, my folks. And let's get to an outro. So, that's it. And, uh, yeah, it's surprising to see my face. This video was a long time in the making, but at last, I finally got it done. <laughs> this was a long time in the making. Thank you for watching, first of all. You are a champ. And, uh, second of all, um, uh, yeah. And my collection review coming soon. Please stick around for that. But sadly, you won't get a peek at this, considering that it's a kid's toy. You won't see it in the shorts either. But if you do, it's just going to be a statue. None, no, none more, none less. But that is all, folks. If you want to support the channel, make sure you hit that big old like button. And don't forget to subscribe. It makes me happy. And also, it makes the algorithm happy and lets the YouTube gods know I exist at all. Okay? Now, also, um, well, what, can I, what else can I say? You guys are amazing. Also, comment down below, what is your favorite animated TV series? Only animated, no live action. Now, of course, if you couldn't tell everybody I'm an animated fan, I'm an animation fan. So... That is all, folks. And one last thing. Long live the squirrels. Bye, everybody. I will see you next time.